In this video, let's go over recursion and how we can use it to iterate through folders and subfolders. So we'll do it in Node.js using a regular folder on our computer. I'll also go over doing the same thing in like Google Drive. First of all, let's look at the structure here. So if you look in this case, we have this main folder, which is this one right here. Now within that folder, if I open it, see we got two folders. Now within this folder, I got pictures. And in that I have three folders. And if I go back, I have videos, which has two folders. Now each one of these folders could have more folders in them. So if I go, for example, inside of this YouTube, see it has two folders in it again. If I go inside of this, there are no folders at that point. And if I, for example, go back to pictures on this higher level, we have like this JPEG that has two folders in it. Now within that, we have this web folder that has three more folders in it. And in this one, apparently in 2020, there is nothing. In 2021, we have a couple of folders. In this one, we have a few folders. So the challenge here is that we don't really know how many levels deep this is going to go. And we also don't know how many folders we have in each one of these folders. So we end up having this tree-like structure that you have to go through to find all those folders, which are all located within this folder in this case. So before we start looping through these folders, let's start by creating a JavaScript file. And let's just talk about recursion really quickly. So recursion is when a function calls itself. And on a very basic level, if we just create a function, and for now, I'll just keep it simple. I'll just console log something here. So we could go down here and call that function. And for right now, that should just console log hello the way it is. So if I open the terminal, and just run that code that says hello down here. Now, what if I go here and call that function within the function itself? So what's going to happen when I run this function, it's going to call this function, which is essentially the same function. And then it's going to call this function again, which is the same function. And we're going to end up in this loop that will never end. So that's why when you use recursion, you want to have some sort of condition for this to stop because otherwise that's going to keep calling this function forever. So to do something very basic, we could just go here and do some variable. And inside of this function, we could do some sort of if statement and say if that i equals zero, then return. So basically, stop execution here. If not, we can basically just take that i and decrement it by one. So now if we go ahead and run this, see, we end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11 hellos. So we start from 10 and we keep looping until we get this to zero and we stop here. If we didn't have this condition, that would just never stop. So this is pretty much the key about recursion is that you have a function that calls itself. And in this function, you need some sort of if statement that will check and stop this function from running. Otherwise, you're going to end up with eternal loop. So this is pretty meaningless, but we can use this concept to loop through our folders here. So we have this main folder, which is located here in the same folder here. So let's just start by doing a very basic function. Let's get rid of this. And let's just import FS module. So if we wanted to basically see what folders we have in a directory, we could use that FS module and we could do read there. Let's use synchronous version for this. 
and I need the path to the file. And for that path, let's actually also include path module. And what we can do, we can do path dot resolve. And we'll take the path to our current directory and join it with our folder here called main folder. So right now, if we just save this in a variable and we just console log those results, let's just see what this looks like. So I'm going to run this code. And as you can see, I ran this and it tells me that within that folder, we got this, this, and this. And pictures and videos, that refers to this too. And this .ds store is a hidden file that is on a Mac. You would probably not get that if you're on a Windows machine. So that's what's currently in that particular folder. Now it doesn't tell us whether these are folders or these are files. Like this one is actually a file. So let's try to loop through these and see how we can check if these are files or not. So for each file, or maybe just call it rest for result. Let's take FS module. So here we have this method lstat sync. And here we need to again pass the path to a file or a directory we want to check. So for example, if I do path dot resolve. And again, I'll just do the turn name for now. We'll later put it in a variable. So we're going to take this and we're going to combine that with that res, which is going to be this file or directory we're passing to this. And on this, we have different methods. One of them is going to be is directory. We can check if that's a directory or if that's a file. So this allows us to check if that's a directory or that's a file. So to make this simpler, let's change this to map and simply return if that's a directory. And we'll save these results to a new variable. So now if we just console log folders and I go here and rerun this, I got false true true, false being this first one because it's not a directory, these two are. Now, instead of doing this, we'll just change this map to filter. And if we go back and rerun that, you'll see it's only gonna return the ones that are trues, which is pictures and videos, which basically means at this point, we got the folders out of that directory and any files are just filtered out. Now we can simplify this by just making this a single liner. So if I just move this up, remove this return and brackets. So just to have this entire thing on a single line, it should be the same thing. Finally, let's just create a variable here. And that's going to be this. And then we're going to pass that folder path here and also here. That way we won't have to repeat that again. So, so far I was able to read through a directory and list directories in that directory basically. So now if I wanted to read what's inside of pictures directory, I have to basically do the same thing all over again on that pictures directory. And then I have to do that also on videos directory. So the idea is going to be that we're going to give it a folder and it's going to have to go through that list of folders. And for each folder, it's going to do that same thing. So that list of folders, we can think about it as an array. So similar how I got this, see a list here. So basically we want our function to accept a list 
And what I mean by that, instead of having this being a single folder, let's create an array here. And we could technically just do a comma and add more folders. So let's call this folder paths instead of folder path. And then for that list of folder paths, we can basically just loop through it. And for each folder path, we will basically just run this. Let me just align all this code. One more time, let's run this and verify that this still works. So I'm gonna go ahead and rerun that code. And you can see it still returns pictures and videos. So finally, instead of having this folder paths here, let's just pass that folder paths as a variable to this function. And then when we run that function, we'll simply just pass that list of folders here. And again, we should end up with the same thing. So now again, what I need to do, once I get these folders, then for each folder, I have to repeat the same thing. I have to go inside of that folder and see what's inside of that folder, which means again, we need to pass this list that we get out of this to that same function. So that's gonna be our recursion. So what we're gonna have to do here for each one of those folders, we're gonna have to call that same function again, say hi. Apparently that's what I named this. We should probably rename this function. Right now, that's good enough. And we'll pass these folders here. Let's type this correctly. So what's gonna be our condition to stop this? Well, if we look through this, like if I go under videos, then I go under YouTube, then I go under HD. Once we don't have any more folders, that's when we need to stop. So basically what we can say is that if that folders list is empty, then return. So for now, let's just put it in here, even though we don't probably need to do this, but just to keep this organized and simple so that's easier to understand. So we'll say if this folders length equals zero, which would mean it's an empty array, then we're gonna return. Otherwise, we're gonna do this. There is one problem though here. This folders list, when we get those folders, it's just the name of the folder. It's not the whole path. And this first one we got here is the whole path. So what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to add this folder path in front of this folders that we get here. So to do so, let's just create a constant folder paths. This is folder path, this is folder paths. And we'll just take those folders and map through that list. And for each folder, we'll do that path.resolve and make sure we put that folder path in front of that actual folder name. So if this folder is pictures, then we want to have the whole path to that pictures folder in front of that folder name. So that means here, we're gonna pass folder paths. Let's actually also console log folder paths. Let's actually remove some of the spacing. So let's try to run this and see what we get. And I just noticed I got two folder paths variables here that are technically two different things. Let's name this one inner folder paths. Just to make sure we avoid confusing this. So this is folder paths, we're passing to this main one. Here we get that inner folder paths. All right, let's try to rerun this. Let's just see what happens. As you can see, I was able to run that and get this. And basically, this is our list of folders. You can see how we first log pictures and videos, which is basically the first two folders we got in our main folder. Then within this, we're gonna go inside of 
one of those. Which one is it? Pictures, apparently. And within this, see, it says there are three. So if we go pictures, see, we got three of them. And then it goes through the inner ones of that and so on and so on and so on. So it goes through all of those inner folders. And then at some point, it's going to go on that top level, see videos, which was this one right here. And it's going to loop through all of those two. So here we also have this empty array logs that's here. So what happens here when we check inside of that folder, we find it's an empty array of folders. And then we console log that empty array here. And then we pass it to say hi function with an empty array and then goes here. And then because the length is zero, it stops. So technically this is redundant here because if the length is zero, that wouldn't run this for each loop anyways, and it wouldn't call the function itself. We have it up there anyways, that's good enough. But if we wanted to clear these empty array logs, then we can move that if statement over here. And then we can check if that inner folder paths length is zero, then we'll return out of this block. Otherwise, we'll console log the folder and call the function. So let's just rerun this to see what we get. So now if I scroll up, see, it still gives me that videos and YouTube and all that stuff. And if I go up, it gives me like pictures and all of this. The only difference now is that we don't have those empty logs. Now, if you just wanted a list one after the other, instead of having this separate arrays, you could just, instead of doing this here, you could just loop through that. And just to keep it simple, let's just console log that inner folder. Did I not type that right? Yeah, let's just correct this. And then I'm gonna get rid of this console log here. And if I save this, go back and rerun this thing. See, we got that full list of folders. Uh, we should probably rename this function. Let's call it output folders. Output all folders, maybe. That would make it a little better. Now, if you wanted just an array of folders later so you can work with this instead of just console logging, there are a couple of things you can do. You can either have a variable outside of this and then just keep adding to that list here. So instead of doing this, you can just do folders list dot push and we can just push inside of this array. Another technique is to pass that array as another argument here and recursively just keep adding to that array. For this, that should now keep adding this inner folders to this folders list. And since all of this is synchronous, we could just probably go down here and do a regular console log of our folders list. Let's just take a look and see now I got an array of all of those folders here. So when you have problems like this, when you have like this tree sort of structure and you don't know how many levels deep, etc., you need to go and it's constantly the same thing you do over and over again, like in this case, we go constantly inside of a folder and we get a set of folders, then recursion is probably a good way of solving it. Now, why don't we try to implement the same logic now in app script environment? So I'm going to go back to this. We have the same main folder here. We have all these folders inside of this. So let's open a Google sheet. And let's open a script. So let's first go get the 
ID of the main folder, which is going to be see in this main folder. This is the link. So the ID would be just this part. So here we can use drive app and get folder by ID. And the ID is going to be this. So let's just store it in a variable. So now here in this folder, we're going to have to get the folders, which returns an iterator. So it doesn't return an array, unlike Node.js environment. And what that means is that we have to keep running next on this until there are no folders left. So while it still has next in it, we need to run next. So we're going to do a while loop. So we'll say while that folders iterator has next. So there are still folders left in that iterator. We're just going to run this and that's going to give us a folder. We'll call it inner folder again. So let's just again, console log that inner folder. Uh, we're going to console log probably the name of that folder. So let's just run this to see what this does. And of course, we're going to have to do permissions. And see, we got videos, pictures, which are those two folders in this top level. Now here, we don't have to check whether it's a folder or not, because our method just returns folders. Now let's, in addition to just console logging the name of the folder, let's also console log the ID of the folder. So if I run this, now it should console lock the ID and then the folder name, ID and the folder name. So now again, let's just, instead of having it here, let's run that function. So we'll take this output folders function, run it here using this new function. And basically we'll just pass this as an argument and we'll accept that argument right here. So right now, if I just run this, we get the same effect. Now we can take this ID and pass it to the same function again and run it all over again, right? So that ID would be this. So we could call the same function all over again with this folder's ID right there. And then once we get to a folder that doesn't have folders, this get folders is going to probably return an iterator that doesn't have next in it. So therefore, it wouldn't get inside of this while loop and it would not run this anymore. So let's try to run this and see what happens and we'll go from there. So we got all these folders. I think we got all of them, but it's kind of hard to look at this because it just gives us just the folder name by itself. It's probably best to have the path to the parent. So for that, let's create another argument here. We'll call it parent path. And we need to, of course, provide that here. So the parent for my main folder, which is this main folder, is the drive itself. See, my drive. Doesn't matter, it's just text. Maybe we'll just do root. And actually we also have the actual folder, which is main folder. 
So once we get this, then when we pass this, when we log the name, let's actually put this in an array and we'll just take the parent path, comma, and we'll take the actual folder name, that inner folder, and we'll just join them using this. Kind of similar to that resolve. Only here we actually provide our own separator for resolve, it figures it out for your operating system automatically. So that should get us the actual path slash the folder name. Now then when we call this output folders function, we need to pass that new parent, which is gonna be the same thing all over again. And since we're gonna have to repeat it here, let's just store this in a variable. and use that in this console log, and then also use it here to pass that parent path here to the same function all over again. Well, let's run this and see what happens. Now, see, it goes videos, and then inside of videos, we got TikTok and we got YouTube, which is, these two, and then we go under YouTube, and under YouTube we got HD and 4K. Nothing here, nothing here. So that's that. And then under TikTok, there's nothing. So that should be that videos folder. And then it moves on to see pictures. And then as you can imagine, we're gonna run through all the folders and we're gonna output all the paths. And then again, maybe we can just store this in an array instead of just outputting each one of these. And for that again, let's just create a variable here being an empty array. Now we need to use that inside of this function right here. So we'll pass that too as an argument here, and we'll accept that as an argument here, folders array, and then here, instead of console logging this, we'll just push it to that array. Let's remove this console log, and let's try to console log the whole array here. Let's see how this works. It says, cannot read property push of undefined. So I forgot to do something here. So I did folders array here. That's correct. We're gonna push it. I forgot when I call the function again to provide that folders array to our inner function. So we can push it to that as well. So let's do that. Save this, rerun. So I'm still console logging the IDs. And here's our whole array of this. So maybe we should just put as a two-dimensional array folder and then the ID here. So we can write it to our spreadsheet. So we could do it by here. Instead of just pushing this one thing, we can push an array. And we're going to do the ID and this. Now, since we're gonna need this ID, let's just also store it in a variable. And then we'll pass that ID as a second column here. And then we'll pass that ID here as a variable to this function. So I'm also going to get rid of this ID console log and I'm going to run this. And we got our array of arrays. See, it gives us this, gives us this. Let's just finish this by finally writing that to our spreadsheet here, just to make it look nice. So we'll do spreadsheet app, get active spreadsheet, get active sheet maybe. 
and then get range. So we're going to start from row one, column one, or maybe we'll do row two. We'll keep the first one for headers. And then number of rows will be as many rows as we got in this array, folders.length. And number of columns is two. We got the first column being the path to the folder and second column is the ID of the folder. So we'll finally do set values and we'll pass this array here to just write it to our spreadsheet. We don't need to console log anymore, I guess. And we're gonna run this. More permissions for our spreadsheet. And if I go back to this, see I got my two columns. One of them is the ID of the folder and the one here is the path of the folder. And there we go. We got that path to our folders nicely in our spreadsheet with IDs in this next column. Again, using that logic of recursive functions and running the same function within the same function we're able to do something like this. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.